Hi, I'm Fran Agolto with the developer relations team here at WP Engine. And um, today I'm super, super stoked to be here because uh, one of my main uh, developer friends who helped me out in my career when I was just little bitty <laughs> junior dev learning a React uh, in a React boot camp. When you were a young uh, Alex, Padawan. When I did, yeah, when I was a young Padawan, Alex, remember that? Uh, yes. My my old coworker from WP Engine, and um, now a huge contributor to the uh, headless WordPress uh, community, um, Alex Moon. Alex, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. I uh, well, yes, I'm Alex. I used to work at WP Engine. I used to work at Gatsby. I've been doing headless WordPress since before it was cool. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're st and it's getting more cooler and we're trying to make it super super cool yeah. uh, for for all the developers out there to just go headless um and today we're gonna go over a software that alex has made called and i didn't even know what this was y'all so this is a learning experience for me uh Alex, am I butchering it? Can I call it REPL or do you go yeah. REPL? No, Repl I call it a REPL. I, I assume that's what the rest of the internet calls it. But, you know, we're on the internet, so who knows what everyone else is calling it. <laughs> <laughs> so he created a REPL for WP GraphQL. What we're covering today, y'all, is, first of all, what is a REPL? Um, and right there, I spell out the acronym read, evaluate, print, loop. Uh, we're going to cover its usage and current functionality, so we're going to demo it. Uh, Alex will walk me through it. I've I don't I have never really used it before. I've only seen him use it, so it'll be kind of like a learn with Jason style. And then he's going to talk about the roadmap and the future functionality of what he's going to add to this and what he might need assistance wise in the future to 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 make things better for uh, headless WordPress. So I'm going to exit out of this, Alex, and then open up a browser here. And okay. I don't know what I'm doing. What's the first thing I need to do? Uh, we're gonna start by going to repl.wpgraphql.com. Oh, I already, okay. So this will uh, boot up and uh, yeah, we're here. This is kind of the default that'll load in. Um, your browser remembered all the those query parameters that are there, but uh, if you just go straight to the thing, those will load in. Um, as defaults, so if you go to kind of the to the naked uh, URL, um, but yeah, we're here. So, a couple of things I think background. Like, well, I guess we'll start with what is a REPL, right? Is that yeah. where we're starting? Yeah, that's the that's the first thing to cover. So, yeah, the, I don't know. <laughs> like the these are as old as time, right? Like as long as code has been around, people have been having to and a REPL. So. When I talk about REPL, I actually think of more of the word replicate than I do read, evaluate, print, loop. Um, and I think like REPL, like the reason it's all caps is because it does come from that like idea of like, oh, okay. Like, but that's a general more like software term, I think. I don't, I don't know. We could look up like an actual definition. Sure. Um, but uh the idea is like, you know, if you're in like a terminal, right? Like you read a piece of input, you evaluate it and you print an output. Um, and that's what we're doing, but just, you know, we're reading the evaluation. Like in our case, we want to read GraphQL input. We want to evaluate that and we want to print out our return, our GraphQL response. It's, there's a lot more code happening than, you know, in a terminal or yeah. whatever. Uh, but that's at the end of the day what we want to do. And so these have become much more popular. If you uh, open up another tab and go okay. to, uh, I want to say it's felt.dev slash REPL. Let's see if I remember this felt. Uh... So this is Svelte's REPL. Um, oh. So this is like the Svelte's compiler. Right, so for those who don't know, it's like uh, is a front end framework like React or Vue, um, and so this is like something that would normally run on Node in your terminal is being like is also the glory of JavaScript is this can also be run in a browser, right? Um, so they're running this in a browser, and you can write Svelte code here. And so half the time, if you like Google a problem or like a bug or like how to do something in Svelte a REPL comes up where someone's implemented it. 
like it might not be good it might be like kind of a quick demo or it might just be someone playing around with it but they've like they've written it up and they've hit the save button and it's gotten you know into search engine history so these but these are really helpful for like i'm trying to build a component and instead of having to worry about like the entire application stack that i have around this thing i can just quickly throw a component in here and like test it maybe i'm running into a bug right and i don't know if that bug is coming from somewhere else in my application or if the bugs coming from svelte so i can isolate all that out and say okay here's just the code to replicate or reproduce uh this one piece of functionality and i can confirm mm. you know either i can learn something right i can confirm a bug or eliminate the possibility I go oh it's not happening in the REPL it probably means it's a bug in my code and not in Svelte somewhere um or you know you know a bug in my knowledge <laughs> uh, per se like I need to figure yeah. out why this isn't happening um and so would you say this kind of like one of the benefits that is popping up in my head as you're talking through this Alex is would it be safe to say one of one of the huge benefits of using a REPL is you don't have to spin up. You literally are on a browser, right? Yeah, and right. So like whether it's Svelte or WordPress, if you go, OK, I have a bug. What do I need to do? Like so I come at this from the perspective of a maintainer, mm -hmm. right? So and I, most people, even if you're not a maintainer, kind of reproduce bugs like this. But sure. I've like learned this from being a maintainer is like someone reports a bug or I discover a bug. The first thing I want to do is isolate what piece of code that bug, like where that comes from. And if I have an entire application stack, you know, and other dependencies, that's all confusing things, right? In WordPress world, like we all know the first thing Jason Ball is gonna ask you to do if you, you tell him there's a bug is ask you to disable every other plugin well, yeah, that's what he tells me to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he but, just says, yeah, turn it all off. Like if you're anything like me, you're like, well, this is this is like a production site so like i can't disable my plugins there and like local makes this pretty easy at times but like for some reason local's broken on my computer right now so i've had a couple times where i'm just like end up cowboy coding on <laughs> my production site which isn't great i'm just like i'm just i don't actually gonna... need these plugins right now i'm just going <laughs> to disable these <laughs> no one's visiting oh, oh <laughs> um, gosh and so it's like, or I'm trying to like fork it within WP Engine's environment. And it's just like, all that takes time and it's slow. And so like, I've been dreaming of this for like two years of like, I wanna just be able to run WordPress and like PHP in a browser and like just spin it up in seconds, not minutes. Cause like Ooh. the faster I can, you know, make that loop. Yeah. Um, that loop part, the more, the faster I'm doing those evaluations, right? Their mental evaluations as much as their technical, you know, computing, the computer evaluating a piece of code. And I can go, okay, hey, this isn't happening or this is still happening in this isolated environment. So now I could go on from there and take that knowledge. Um, Would you say this is, and MJ does bring up a good question, because is this a tool? Would you call a REPL a tool? Yeah, it's totally it's a, a tool. tool. Okay, okay, for, okay. For tool for debugging, a tool for learning, right? Um, a lot of people, I mean, well, uh, Repolit is like the where this name probably got popularized, but like Code Sandbox and all these tools that are more generic. Oh, Code Sandbox, yeah. These are all REPLs, right? Oh. Like whatever you actually call them, like that's at the end of the day what these are. So this is like svelte.dev um, slash REPL oh, is just, a REPL specific to Svelte, right? I could go use Code Sandbox to do the same thing, but I would still be having to tell Code Sandbox, oh, install Svelte, make this work like this. Like there's still a couple more steps in there where there's their REPL, it's like going from zero. Um, and they have a new one for SvelteKit. Um, I don't remember the URL offhand, but that's mm -hmm. running the entirety of SvelteKit, which is an application framework like uh, interesting like uh like uh next or noxt uh, yeah or gatsby but that entire application framework is sitting in a browser um for those curious all this is possible by wasm uh web assembly web um, yeah 
Yep. And so you're literally, uh, so in our case, so like how the uh, WP GraphQL's REPL works is you're literally running um, PHP, like th that that isn't an iframe to another server to that where PHP, there's a PHP, you know, lamp stack running. Like that is literally sitting in your running in your browser because WASM is executing Ooh, this is cool code that runs the PHP engine um, and has all the files to render out this version of WordPress on this, you know. So if you open up Stack there uh, on the left side, you can choose which version of PHP and which version oh. of WordPress you want, right? So okay, you tell it that information. It loads that WASM bundle and spits it at, and starts rendering this into the iframe from, uh, you know, a, basically a worker uh, behind the scenes doing all these calculations. So this is a hundred percent local, right? You're never going to share this. Um, this code isn't going to leave you, your computer unless you want it to. Um, so is this like, and this is, I, this kind of leads to my next question because. Oh, that's coming soon. Never mind then. <laughs> you were leading into that. Sorry. No, I was no. wondering about plugins, but yeah. So plugins are like this gets into like what's coming next. Let's let's get to that in a second. So let's okay. just start kind of basic functionality. Um you've loaded this up. Uh I've already it loads you into the GraphQL screen. It yep. has a query here for you because at some point you've typed this query in on a REPL site before, probably a lot when we were prepping for this. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's because that's saved in local storage. Um, currently, we can't save queries. Um, oh, you so, can't. Right. Um, it'll save it in your local browser. But if you try to share this, like that URL with me at this moment, it's not going to um you know let you like do that it's not gonna when it gets to me it's not gonna have whatever query you wrote in there trying to show me how to do something um okay which is i think really important functionality right because like whether it's you know the svelte one like has that's great if i've had people all the time let's just stick with wp graphql of like they'll come in on on slack or on discord and be like hey i'm trying to do this how do i do it um an awful one if you type like author start typing an author on your your post node there um one of the first things that come up is author id uh and uh author id yeah, yeah. Here. and if you're super used to rest and you just you haven't really like internalized how graphql works yet you're you're new to this ecosystem a lot of people will grab that and then they're like okay i have the author id now now, how do I get the author's name? And they're thinking like, oh, I need to make like, they're used to rest. We're like, oh, I query for the author ID. Then I make a second query for the author's information. And it's like, no, 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 no. You actually just need to hit, you know, delete the ID part, add some brackets. Um, and now you can get their name. Um, oh, you got to go node and then name. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and they just they're because they're not familiar with graphql yet they need this example um a quick example of this uh, i think if you do like full name or just name it'll actually have a name it won't be null yeah. but um it should just be admin um let's see yep yep right. so like they literally just need this sent to them now Right, but because right now that GraphQL query isn't saved anywhere in the URL or any in a, any other way, they wouldn't be able to see that if you sent it to them. Uh, so, okay. but, right, so like yeah. right now, okay. this is good for replication. Like I can come in here, make a query, and say, "Yep, it, that bug that's still happening is happening." I can confirm that's happening. Um, now, the next theoretically, I would like to be able to. If I wanted to, I could hit the download button in the upper right hand corner. Where's, um, Where's the download button? It's uh third one. Yep. Oh, okay. So if you hit that, uh, we can show it. this. Uh, so it'll just open up a zip. And if you look at that zip, um, uh, yeah, it's just a WordPress folder. Um, 
Whoops. There we yeah, go. WordPress too, whatever. Yeah, one of those. Ah. You're you're unpacking it there if you go into those word, one of those WordPress folders. Let me just go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a full WordPress site. Oh, like, dude, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just so like if you wanted like at some point the REPL is more limiting than it is uh, helpful, <laughs> then like you can immediately eject from that and go drop that in local or what on whatever uh, Docker you could, like, yeah. or local environment if if that was more beneficial. But like um you know if if i'm replicating if i have a fix maybe like i want to write some code so okay let's go back to the repo i'm getting ahead of myself i think so kind of what you see is what you get right now right you can yeah. um the url you're on um in wordpress is on the left side so you're you know wp admin so you can easily um if you uh you know clear that out and do like you know uh you know just go to root like it'll take you there um, and hit enter, um, you might need one slash, but, um, and it'll just take you to your index page. Like uh, you can just yeah. browse the site, right? Um, oh, okay. This would be like a whole, this, I feel like I'm, I have a WordPress install spun up. Yeah, you do. Honestly. That's, yes. that's what this is at this point. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's yes. a WordPress install. Okay. Um, if you yes. go to, you, go back to WP admin. Okay. Uh, and you can go to plugins okay. uh, right now basically i'm installed the only thing different between this is uh, the debug info is literally just a helpful thing it spits out like debug dot you know php info stuff um if that's helpful uh and then i'm in the wordpress importer git loader is part of the whole wordpress playground um okay which is, and then WP GraphQL, as I see, I'm installing by default because that's what this is for. Um, so if you wanted to work with like the WP GraphQL for ACF, you would need to install that plugin, especially you would hit add new. Um, this is a whole thing in my head. I'm trying to figure out how to handle plugins long term. As you can see, coming soon, you know, soon in quotes, we'll see how long that takes because um, this isn't the easiest problem. Um, I think the folks that work on Playground are working on getting this UI working. You can see they have a note that says Playground does not yet support connecting to the plugin directory. I believe they're working on getting that part fixed. So, uh, but for now, you can upload any plugin you want, right? Um, okay. So if you want to test ACF, go download a zip of the ACF plugin and get those uploaded. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. You can create, come in here. There's not a lot of content other than what's default for WordPress. Again, I think it would be nice to be able to get some, a little, you know, instead of having one or two posts and one or two pages to work with by default, maybe having, you know, three or four. Um, I mean, but I can add a new post, right? Just, yeah, you can. Just like a, oh, okay. Yeah, it's you're just working with WordPress at this point. Uh, the big caveat to all this of like, oh, you can just upload a plugin and you can just do this is again, none of that is say there's, we currently haven't implemented any way to save that um, other than the download button. Plugins and content will work. Uh, for those who are curious about how the database works in your cool. browser, yeah. um, we're not running MySQL, we're running, it's running SQLite. Um, so it's literally saving to a file. So when that, that instance that was downloaded um, in the zip file has a SQLite file in there. And if you were to spin that up on a PHP server, yeah. It would just be talking, still keep talking to that database, um, that SQLite database. Oh, that's rad. Yeah. Um, so in the future, just out of curiosity, would this be something that, hey, if you and I were working on a um, headless WordPress site together, and I said, hey, man, Alex, I'm, I'm running on some, um, I'm running on some bug issues with my GraphQL queries. Could I literally just like, copy this link, uh, the link here or the URL here and send it to you and you'd be able to access it of what's going on with mine. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I totally think, I think there's even a cooler. Um, yeah. So if you have a, if you started working on it from here, um, that would be like, like hopefully you're not running a production. I don't think you could ever use this as your WordPress backend. 
Um, I also don't want to, you know, have to pay for the hosting of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I want to take a like quick pot. So ask your question again of like, sorry, ask your question again. Um, oh, my question was like in the future, would it be feasible to say you and I were working on a headless site together yeah. and I was having some issues in um, my GraphQL queries, like some bugs or whatever it might be that I yeah. need you to look at. Could I literally just like grab this URL and then send it to you and you would have access exact replicate yeah. of what's happening. On, so you know how, yeah, the question I guess I'm seeing is like, how do I get to a replication that I can share with like a maintainer or a friend or whoever, right? Uh, yeah. You know, a coworker. Um, <clears throat> so like, as of right now, you would have to like, yeah, load up the REPL, say, okay, this is my version of WordPress. This is my version of WP GraphQL, upload any plugins. Um, like in the future, like maybe we have a list of plugins on the left side. You can just check a couple boxes and it installs them and makes Ooh, them available cool. for you. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know that like, it's, this is like where I'm trying to figure out how to implement this. Cause like, theoretically you could have any plugin on there, even if it's not WP GraphQL related, especially if like we've seen issues where like someone installs Yoast, like, and there's a Yoast adapter for WP GraphQL, but maybe that conflicts with like Faust in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it's like, even if I put all the list of all the WP GraphQL plugins on the left side, like there's still like, oh, someone's going to need Faust installed or someone's going to need Yoast installed that aren't, they're, they're, related to the fact that we have WP GraphQL. Yeah. Um, this is a WP GraphQL related, but they're not core plugins, but you could keep extending that out now to basically the entire WordPress plugin directory. So like where do, at what point are we just re-implementing the interface that's already in WordPress? That's a good point. So like what, <sighs> there's two solutions to this. So if I want everything to be shareable via U the URL, and I've got to load in to that URL and say, this person has this plugin, this plugin, and this plugin installed and save that, add that to the URL query string. And that's not a bad thing. And I have to add like the GraphQL query and the Gra GraphQL variables into that query string. And that's not saving what they built actually. It's just saving the configuration, right? Um, but the draw the point that that kind of breaks down is like okay if if you had to construct a very specific piece of data like you you installed acf but then you sure. added data to acf right or you added certain post types you know to get this to all like to reproduce or replicate whatever bug you're running into or trying to fix mm -hmm. um <clears throat> that that's that gets hard so and that, that infinite amount of data doesn't fit in that URL. So like, at what um, point do we just say, at some point, you're always gonna, at some point, gonna need just to be able to save that file system that you get when you hit download and then reload that file system oh. on another computer. So computer, like- Another machine, yeah. Right, so like, I, I just need to do it, but like the, if you, uh, another good site to go to, um, would be the actual WordPress playground where all this technology comes from. Um, but we can get to that in a second. So like they have a download button and an upload button, right? So like that short circuits this pretty quickly of like, okay, I can download it. I can send you the zip file. You can go to playground, hit upload um, and it'll load in that database with those themes, those plugins, those whatever you installed and it'll be available there. And that's really helpful. Uh, but there's a lot of manual work in there. Like um, I've already started on a rough implementation, like with authentication with Supabase Ooh. and then uploading that zip and set up to your hard drive, it uploads it to blob storage and then gives you a URL. So instead of, you know, wpgraphql.com slash and all this like config information, it's just ABC123. I send you that inf URL and it goes, oh, yep. Here's that zip it file. It grabs from the blob, yeah. And it just it just loads that loads. blob, and it has all the data, all everything just there, um, and it just works. And I think that's kind of like an ideal state down the road, because mm, that's, that's where cool. like 
you can now share that with Jason Ball or add it to a GitHub ticket. Yeah. Um, you can, but I think there's even like, we start thinking of this as like, okay, this is a like one reason, um, like, so, okay, this is a good spot to step back here. Yeah. All this technology, let's go just do a quick search on Google or whatever for WordPress playground. And it'll bring us to the right page. Um, cause I'm not going to remember the URL. Um, yeah, never, top one there. Yeah, I've never looked at this. Uh, so this is kind of their intro, but if you go to the Try WordPress Playground button there, they've got a bunch of other links there, um, but just hit the Try button. Um, you, it kind of looks like our page because it's Oh my God, it does, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay. They've got it. Um, and in the upper right, you see uh, the upload and the download buttons. Um, oh, so this is a REPL. See, yeah, th this is oh, this is a REPL. Oh, okay. This, this is I'm literally the same code. REPL. Okay, like, yeah. I am iframing their API. It's like an HTML file that loads all this in. I'm just controlling it via their API, telling it what version. Oh. Stuff. So at this point, I've basically reproduced this and told it to install WP GraphQL by default. Now, hopefully, like whether it's myself or other people one day build this like a lot more structure around it to be a lot cooler. Like one thing um, their team, at, um, Adam has been working on, you see where it says temporary up there? Uh, where? Uh, yellow uh, exclamation oh, this, mark. Yeah. Right yeah. So r right now everything is session based, which in a browser means the second you hit refresh, it's gone. Um, so like we were talking about uploading plugins and adding posts and stuff to WordPress. You can do that, but if you hit that refresh button, or if you have to change, uh, and also, I believe if you change the version of WordPress, um, like, or the version of PHP on the rebel, yeah. it's going to wipe all that out because it's, it's literally sitting in memory basically. Oh, um, okay. So what he has started to do is implement, um, session storage and local storage so if you hit that temporary button um i believe that's actually a button you can yeah so right now it's reset on page refresh so if you say persistent um oh he's even got it linked so that's probably a chrome only feature because i believe the file system api is chrome only oh. um but like he's actually started to play with actually like persisting this into the browser or onto disk locally, uh, which is really cool. Dude. So um, that that's like, could be an interesting next step. Uh, that said, if like we take the time to implement like cloud storage, yeah. um, you kind of might as well do that. The thing he's avoiding is, is this problem. Like, I'm not going to sit like, I can't personally afford to pay for everyone to, you know, create thousands of REPLs with you know, uh. slightly different information. Um, they've done a really good job of compressing these builds. Like that zip you downloaded was like four max. That said, you you add Yoast, you add Yoast for WP GraphQL, you add a couple pieces of data, you've Oops. probably just double or tripled that that database size. <laughs> um, and unless we're getting super based to sponsor this, uh, I don't want to pay for that. Personally. Oh, you know, um, Alex, what is that? Um, out of curiosity, do you know what this is? I don't. I mean, I know it says beta. Maybe you don't. But what is this live direct directory from your? Right. So that's if I think it's called the file system API. Okay. Um, Chrome has an API where you can access files directly on the um, hard drive of your computer via, via browser APIs. Um, okay. And so my guess is, and like all browsers can load a file, right? Like you can upload something. That's that's old news. That's been around since yeah, who knows when? Yeah. Um, when we were just you know we last we lads and lasses, um, <laughs> but. This is actually like your browser's talking through an API, reading and writing from desk. Um, oh. And Chrome has that because of things like Chromebook um, and their Chrome OS. Um, but I don't believe it's it's one of those things that Chrome's like would love to make a standard, but there's a lot of security things around it. So I yeah. think it's it's either just no one else cares or it's slow moving. Um, <laughs> So I think I'm pretty sure if memory serves, it's only in Chrome right now. Um, 
But yeah, so mm-hmm. I'm guessing that's what he's using to read and write directly to disk, which is really cool. Um, Cause you could also, you know, if you have a WordPress instance, you could kind of load that up and, um, this is actually but yeah, so they're doing playground. You, yeah, this is what you team did. Is doing a lot of great work. Um, and I'm just building on top of that. Like none of this would be possible without their work. Um, yeah, this is cool. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Very cool. Here. So if I, I'm just, so back to your question though, you asked about like, how do we get to this? How do you replicate stuff? And I think that's where there's some really interesting, these are very like theoretical ideas I have in my head right now. So cool. Um, (laughs) <laughs> of like, if I am sitting in my WordPress instance, what's to keep me from creating a button that's sitting in GraphQL that says, hey, I need to replicate something. Um, you click it, it says, all right, these are the five plugins you currently have installed. Or it, it knows your PHP version, it knows your WordPress version. Right. It knows what per- version of GraphQL you're on, and it knows what other plugins you want. So it could go, okay, I'm gonna like you click the button, and it creates a REPL with those three ver- important versions, oh, three, dude. right? And maybe the current query you have in your your you know graphical interface. It just throws it all over into REPL and maybe it asks you like, hey, do you want any other plugins installed with this, right? Um, I don't know if there, there's probably theoretically a way to go, oh, this query is querying schema that comes from ACF. <laughs> so I need to make sure to include the ACF plugin. Like, I don't know if it, you know, how hard that would be, but um, I think you get the point of like, yeah. you could have like a quick button that just like, pulls data, maybe Man, asks you a question sick. of like what plugins you want and then dumps it over into, you know, it could even pull your database if it wanted to and just like dump that data or a subset of like fake data um, and dump that over into REPL. And you could easily have like a quick getting started con- from at least a config perspective of like major versions of things and a couple plugins. And then you just add specific data you need to replicate. And you're yeah, like, you're fun. off to the races yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, thing. That'd be cool. Um, there's one of the reasons Automatic is investing in this technology is because they're starting to do things where like, uh, you can tell it, you can give it a, a GitHub like hash of a commit or a branch of, of a repo. And that's the version of WordPress it installs, or that's the version of a plugin it installs. So like, all of a sudden, all Dude. your testing gets a lot easier. Oh, did I mention uh, the Playground team has a version of this that doesn't run in the browser, it runs in Node on a CLI. So like right now, like Jason what? spends way too much yeah. time fighting like Docker containers and yep. like spinning up does. this whole WordPress system <laughs> just to run a couple tests. Why not? You don't need any of that anymore. You can literally, like, it's a node command to spin up a WordPress server and everything just works. And now you can just sit and, like, hit it on a single server. You're not orchestrating a SQL database and, like, all these different pieces. It can, like, testing gets really interesting. You know, a lot of us are super used to, like, opening a PR and... All of a sudden, Netlify or Vercel or Atlas like comes in here and is like, "Oh, here's the new version of your front end based on these code changes." Correct. Yeah, it's now like that could, preview link, the preview. Yeah. Yeah, like theoretically, you could do the same thing with like WordPress commits, or like if you manage a plug, if you write a plugin, you can do the same thing with that plugin, and like it's like, "Oh, here is a link to your, you know, this this URL, and that URL loads." This code in this code, yeah. With Dude. your changes on uh, like <laughs> that's that would be you dope. Can, you can actually go play with it. So, like all these people that like care about this, like Jason, like I, he's done this before to me. Like, I'll report a bug to him and he's like, Oh, does this work? And I'm like figuring out how to copy the code and go like have this division. And it's just like this whole thing that's like, if we just could 
like have a link to the REPL link. that's just a like to a REPL. Yeah. Here's a commit or here's a branch, like imitate that. And uh, it's just that code's there. And I can be like, yep, this looks like it works. Um, yeah. Cool. That's what I wanted. How, how <laughs> uh, far do you think that that, how far in the future do you think we're away from having a shareable REPL link like that? It's, it's unfortunately, it's the world we live in is it's down to money and time, oh, right? Okay. Like, I, um, I mean, as you know, Fran, like, I don't work in tech right now. Yeah, I know you know. <laughs> um, because, like, that was a personal choice as much as it was, you know, the economy and tech industry's choice uh, when I was looking for a job a couple months ago. But like it, um, you know, if a bunch of people show up on my GitHub and start throwing sponsorship money at me, or a company comes in and um, like WP Engine or one of the other big, you know, um, companies that you know agencies or something comes in and says, yeah. "Hey, this is great work. This would be really valuable to the ecosystem, but us individually, like let's let's throw, you know, not necessarily money at me, but." effort at like building this up into be a thing and will actually work better for the community as a whole um, <clears throat> whether you know great so whether that's someone else coming into it's an open source you know so this is a good point uh you're hovering over the bug report button and the feature request button um if let's see if github's up right now because when we started this video they okay. were right across the board um hey yeah cool. so they're back up so good for them um <laughs> no one had a rough day and probably someone had a rough is. day yeah. um <laughs> yeah we looked at github status because it wasn't loading when i clicked that link to test it and it was literally right across the board hey, there was red. no green there was no yellow everything was red um goes right so yeah, to like his. so folks like um hey if you run into a bug please report it right uh we just fixed one this week um it was a matter of me updating a library that seemed the like the playground would never quite load. Um, so it would just gets stuck on like loading playground or whatever. Um, you, I've got a couple feature requests there that I've threw in um, that things I want to work on or thinking about. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So, you know, feel free to get in there and at least report issues if you see them or uh you know ask for things if you're like oh this is really helpful i need it to do this to make it more helpful for me throw it in here um if you can write code all the better um because <laughs> i i've only got That's so much cool time request. in my week and i'm working in a different job and um man this is cool if yeah so whether it's by time or financially like I would love to see this grow and become a lot more than it is. This, um, this is kind of, I got it to the point where I was like, cool. Um, I can, uh, I'm, I'm good with it as is to start sharing with the world. And hopefully that means we can get other people interested in contributing financially or time-wise to uh, writing code. Yeah. And before I'll, I, we've got like about 15 minutes left. I'm just going to, um, and this will be for anyone watching this video, um, on our YouTube channel, I'll put the resources to Alex's information, uh, in the actual YouTube description. So you'll have these, um, links if you wanted to get in touch with him, uh, if you wanted to help him with this, add any features or even sponsorships or anything like that. Um, you could get in touch with him through there. And then, uh, yeah, I, you know, like thinking through questions, um, I was going to uh, ask MJ, do you have any, oh, she might have one here. Oh, uh, troubleshooting with others. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, Alex. Good to see hey, you. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, my internet's down. So <laughs> I'm <not on> video. <laughs> bad day for GitHub in, in uh, my area. <laughs> but what's the difference between just like, I guess, having the plugins on the left on kind of like the platform versus your local plugins installed on the you know in the browser version of wordpress here yeah that's so like basically in the config panel versus like in the wordpress you know just using the wordpress interface right uh, assuming assuming that 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 feature is enabled yeah and that's i think some of what like 
originally I was like, oh, I could have like a list of like a couple plugins, like, you know, WP GraphQL plugins on this left side. It would be quick, easy, like access, check a box. And then I, you know, run a command that like tells WordPress to install this plugin or load this plugin. Um, and so for some reason that like at a basic level, that's quick and easy. But that's what I realized is I started thinking through the problem and I was like, well, realistically, there's not a limit of like what plugins people might want to install. So, and if I start creating a search thing that actually just goes queries, you know, and uses the, the WordPress plugin directories API, now I'm just recreating their website and the, the interface that's already inside when you go to add new plugin. So I kind of quickly realized that seemed very redundant. Um, so I don't know that that plugin thing is going to exist there on the left side for very long. Um, I threw it there as coming soon because I thought I was going to be building that out. Then I started thinking about it and I went, hmm, this doesn't actually make much sense. <laughs> um, so yeah. it, the, what that looks like in the future, the issue is, is really state. And if it kind of goes back to like, am I saving a zip file or am I saving a config? config if I'm saving yeah. a config, I've got to be able to monitor that config, which means like um, in my application outside of WordPress. Um, so I can either have WordPress like send me a message of like, hey, I've installed this plugin. I've activated this plugin. I've deactivated this plugin. I've deleted this plugin. And I could like track that information or um, I could somehow, I could literally <laughs> use GraphQL <laughs> APIs to query this data out of WordPress, like from the, the host application um, that sits around the WordPress instance to like be like, oh, what plugins are installed right now? Okay, huh. thanks. Let me let me know if those update. <laughs> um, it's it's an interesting problem to solve, but yeah, I think initially. So, for example, I think the same kind of case um, as the plugin issue that you're asking about here is the actual um, graphical instance, what we're looking at here for querying GraphQL. Initially, my assumption was I will load graphical and then WordPress will be kind of like sitting over here in the background and I'll just send requests to WordPress. But what I quickly realized was, well, people might want to come in and add content. Yep. Um, I don't need to create a UI for that. That already exists in WP Admin. And I was like, well, Jason's already, and the team has already done all this work to add like the authorization and like these other little like buttons and stuff and make graphical work for WP GraphQL. Why would I spend all my time recreating that when I could just, um, use the graphical instance that's embedded in WP GraphQL. So then I just like <laughs> eliminated the need to use, you know, my own instance of graphical. Um, but now I have a problem where I, it's harder to track what that GraphQL query currently is. And I, I think I've mostly figured that problem out. I figured out how to get it out. Um, I need to confirm I know how to get it back in when loading that page now. Um, yeah, it looks like, uh, we're loading up a bunch of plugins. I was just messing around with it and just, it's just it. <laughs> cannot be installed or activated. What? Huh? Yeah, I'm sure there's bugs to be though. fixed. Oh, hey, there we go. Hmm. Um, cool. Yeah, like I know we had a bug early on, like graphical wouldn't load. Um, and that that's something to keep in mind. Uh, everyone who wants to use this is like, from playground's perspective all this technology is like super beta <laughs> i i really should have a beta tag on here <laughs> <laughs> it was just too much work so i didn't <laughs> but um is like literally graphical wouldn't load and the issue is it was like hey um you don't have any content headers like you're setting me a con and like I don't have any content headers. It's null. You can't have null content headers. You need to be telling me what kind of content headers you you want. And it turns out is that PHP does this weird thing. If you know anything about PHP servers, is it loads all of your headers for requests into this uh, dollar sign underscore server variable. 
Um, and so if you, you know, do, you know, X header, you know, whatever made up header that you add to your request, it's, you know, um, it's on there on that server thing and you access it, but content type, uh, headers and I think content length are weird. There, there's an exception to them was they're not, um, in, instead of being HTTP underscore content underscore header or uh, underscore type, which is what normally all your headers would get prefixed with HTTP. Um, they're not prefixed with that for whatever reason. And so they don't follow the defaults, but that's like, it was literally some weird comment on the side of some weird thread on some weird forum where I found that information. <laughs> and so I literally had to go to the team and that's why debug info is actually installed by default because I needed debug info's data to, to see what headers had come through on this request. And I could see that it was, it was sitting in there as HTTP underscore content underscore type, but that wasn't what PHP expected or it wasn't what WordPress and all of like, that wasn't how, where it was supposed to be stored. So I had to go back to the team and be like, Hey, we've got a bug here. This should actually be lab labeled just content type, not HTTP content type. Um, despite what, like, it's just a whole confusing thing and we got a bug fix. So like, if you're having issues, whether it's a specific platform or whatever, report a bug, let us know that something's not working. And that might make it like, if I see that come through um, and can re replicate it, I might have to take that back up a step further to the playground team and figure out the issue there because it's most likely there. Right. <laughs> not that my code doesn't have bugs, <laughs> um, but like, I have stuff in place to track those and see those happening if they start happening for a lot of people. Um, whereas anything that happens like kind of in the WordPress window doesn't get bubbled up right now to my like parent application state. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times like something goes wrong and it's just like, even if you look at your console, there's just nothing there because none of those errors are getting bubbled up correctly. Um, anyway, so whole, whole roundabout story, but this is beta. Uh, let me know. It's pretty bugs. cool. Um, so we can hopefully get those fixed. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, thanks, Alex, uh, first and foremost, for uh, joining us on this event. I'll definitely post this up on YouTube uh, by tomorrow. I, I mean, for me, this was definitely a learning. I, I didn't know what a REPL was, but now that I know what it is, I think uh, this is super useful for yeah. cross share testing versus trying to like literally it's this saves you so much time yeah like even if i do take the time to do it on my local machine all of a sudden now i have to get that to you somewhere and it's somehow yeah and we're back to classic well it works on my machine like <laughs> right like we've well, all been it works there on my, yeah uh like it works on my browser it works on my machine and it's like that's like that's just a problem that we need to get away from and REPLs and browsers are the perfect way to do this is be like, look, does it work in the REPL? Like, can you easily like then? Cause like a lot of us, like, and this isn't like a hit on anyone. I don't like spitting up, you know, Docker containers and all this stuff. Man, and I, I know how I, to I do it. I don't like, either. Like, let alone like the it's probably amazing. 80th percentile or that's a made up statistic, but like, however, like the large percentage of people that don't even know where to start with Docker. And that's okay. Like, let's make this easier. Cause like the biggest problem I have as a maintainer is like the Jason does it to you as we talked about earlier. And like, I do it to everything on every project I maintain. The second you come to me with a bug, I'm like, hey, can you give me a minimal reproduction? Yeah. That means deleting all your other plugins, deleting all the extra code, eliminating all the variables you can eliminate and just give me, show me the bug happening with like as least code as possible. Yeah. And yeah. that's what this enables, mm -hmm. like from a maintenance perspective, it helps. And like, see, here's, here's the secret about maintainers asking people to do those reproductions. Yes, we could do that reproduction in half the time, probably if we understand your problem, half the time, we don't understand your problem and that's okay. But 90% of the time, your process of creating that minimal reproduction you figure out your own bug and you solve your own problem. You solve your own problem. Really. Because 
it's a tool to like doing that is how good debuggers like look like debug problems and that's a hard skill to teach so like being like hey i need you to create this minimal reduction and it starts to train people to, uh, on how to debug themselves and then great that's one less thing i as a maintainer have to do and now let's say you actually get through creating that reproduction and you actually identify a bug great now we all are on the same page and we can see a really simplified version of what causes that bug. And now me as a maintainer can go, oh, I can probably tell you what file that happens in because mm -hmm. I know what code is like happening in this very small reproduction. So yeah, um, yeah whether it's for your own learning, whether it's for debugging, whether it's for sharing code and sharing, sharing knowledge, right? Like I'd love to have a version of this um, that you can embed in an iframe. Um, or like an Owen bad, right? Yeah. So I'm writing a blog post. It's like, hey, in GraphQL, this is how you query for an author. And I can literally have the GraphQL query sitting there and you can hit run and um, It'll you can you to... see the output of it. Yeah. And you can play with it and you can add new things. And like, it's this, this whole thing. And that gets really cool. Um, yeah, man. That would be dope. Yeah, it would be. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Alex, if I, um, the mega million jackpot is like 500 mil. If I win, I'm going to buy a ticket. If I win, okay. I'm just going to pay you to maintain it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Oh man. All right. We're, you're going to retire then with the rest of it, right? Uh, for sure. Like I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do what I told you I was going to do. I'm just, but instead of charging people, I'm going to just like literally live at Yosemite national park and like take people up El Capitan for free. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. not going to charge them to be, to guide them up. When yeah. you're a billionaire, you don't need to, you know, actually work. You just get to go have fun. Oh, have fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, we're, we've got five minutes left. Any, any last, thoughts or like did, any, did I answer your question MJ I know I'm I I'm long-winded in my answers so <laughs> you did you did no I, you know what I really see the benefit in this is kind of isolating those those GraphQL kind of maybe inconsistencies between plugins yeah. um you know you bring it down to its basic level instead of having your your you know your your stage side or your dev side or even your local site and, and you know trying to manage all the different plugins and you could just yeah. come in here and do it. And, yeah. you know, is it because they, with all the new uh, GraphQL plugins kind of sprouting up, which is great, um, you know, just trying to keep the the correct versions working and seeing if there's a conflict, like that would yeah. be really, really good yeah. to use here. Which, yeah, goes into back into the whole testing CI pipeline stuff, like something oh, like gosh. this. <laughs> with, like if we can have out of the box simplified testing, of like Ooh. for all that plugin ecosystem within WP GraphQL world of like, hey, here's your base install. It already has WP GraphQL installed. It already has this, this, and this. Like add your plugin and start testing. That just makes everyone's like, the more we can like mm. hand this stuff to the ecosystem and yep. simplify the work those maintainers have to do, um, the higher quality of the ecosystem as a whole is gonna be. Yeah, 100%. All right. Well, thanks again, Alex, for joining. Uh, MJ, thank you so much for thanks, participating MJ. Thanks, as well. Man. And uh, yep, we'll talk to you later. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time. Bye.